I'm going to describe the elimination of a drug from the body under two different circumstances, one in which it follows first-order elimination kinetics and one in which it follows zero-order kinetics. For both of these situations, I'm going to assume that the drug distributes evenly throughout the body after a single bolus dose has been administered intravenously. Most drugs, at concentrations that are used clinically, exhibit first-order elimination kinetics. First order means that a constant fraction of the dose is eliminated per unit time. So if you give a low dose of the drug, a small amount gets eliminated during each unit of time that passes. If you give a higher dose, more drug gets eliminated per unit time. Remember, the amount of drug eliminated per unit time is the definition of the drug's elimination rate. So for first order elimination, the ratio of the dose administered to the elimination rate remains constant. Another way to say this is that the amount of drug that gets eliminated from the body in a given period of time really just depends upon how much drug the person has taken into the body. Let's go to my kitchen for a real-world analogy for first-order elimination. For this analogy, we'll use this sushi rice to represent a drug that gets metabolized to an inactive metabolite by the liver, and then this metabolite gets excreted by the kidney. We'll use a funnel to represent the drug's elimination pathway. We'll put the drug into the body here, and the neck of the funnel will be the elimination pathway. And then the drug will be eliminated in the urine, and we'll use a jar for the bladder. Let's start with a drug dose of one teaspoon of rice. Now let's pour it into the body, and there you go, it's out. I've eliminated a teaspoon of rice in like a second. So basically we have an elimination rate of one teaspoon per second. Next, I'll triple the dose, one tablespoon, that is three teaspoons of rice. Let's pour it into the body and look. I've eliminated three teaspoons of rice in a second, so my elimination rate is now three teaspoons per second. Now let's do a quarter cup. That's 12 teaspoons. It still takes a second for it all to go through, so the rate is 12 teaspoons per second. We've increased the dose 12 fold, and the rate of elimination goes up 12 fold as well. So now you can see that for first order kinetics, the ratio of the dose administered to the drug's elimination rate is a constant. This brings us to an important parameter related to the elimination of drugs, half-life. The half-life is the time that it takes for half of a drug that's in the body to be eliminated, that is, metabolically and or via excretion. For a drug undergoing first-order elimination, the half-life is going to be the same regardless of the concentration of drug that's being eliminated. Now, let's talk about zero-order elimination kinetics. Relatively few drugs exhibit zero-order kinetics. Examples include alcohol, the epilepsy drug phenytoin, and aspirin at high doses. Unlike with first-order kinetics, where a constant fraction of the dose is eliminated per unit time, with zero-order kinetics, a constant amount of drug is eliminated per unit time. What this means is that as you add more drug to the body, the rate of elimination doesn't change to keep up with the increased dose. It stays the same. Now let's go back to the kitchen to see how this works. For zero-order kinetics, we'll use a different funnel with a smaller neck. This would correspond to a metabolic pathway that has a smaller capacity, that is, one that can be saturated at drug doses that are within the therapeutic range. For this different drug with the different metabolic pathway, I'll use quinoa instead of sushi rice. So let's start with a teaspoon. Okay, it goes out quickly, just like with a first order funnel. Let's say the rate is one teaspoon per second. Now let's triple the dose, one tablespoon or three teaspoons. Aha, it takes a little longer. Now let's put in one quarter cup, that is 12 teaspoons. That takes a lot longer. We can see that the elimination pathway is saturated drug can only be eliminated so fast. No matter how much I pour in there, it only comes out at a specific limited rate of about one teaspoon per second. 
I'd like to emphasize that if I put less than one teaspoon of quinoa into this funnel, the elimination pathway would not yet be saturated. At these low doses, the elimination pathway is first order. It was only at the higher doses, where the elimination pathway was saturated, did we start to see zero order elimination kinetics. For most drugs, we're giving doses that fall within the range that would produce first order elimination. But actually, if we really overwhelmed a first order system with a huge amount of drugs, much more than what a person would ever be taking therapeutically, we would experience zero order kinetics.